so we have an idea. I, I'm going to speak very briefly tonight because I actually have to go to uh, one of these housing element meetings in like, I don't know, 15 minutes or so um, for Marinwood Lucas Valley. Um, you know, the time for persuasion, unfortunately, is almost past us. Uh, many of the people that you see here tonight um, have been participants um, in uh, this housing element cycle and, and the previous housing element cycle. And what we've tried to do is just create a little common sense to the problem. Um, I think all of us uh, understand the need for more affordable housing, more um, affordable home ownership opportunities. I mean, we, I, I don't think anyone could say with a straight face, there's no housing needed, except the fact that our population growth is not increasing. Um, but still, uh, for younger generations, for lower income people, they need an entry point so they can get into the housing market. Um, and I do think there are solutions, but unfortunately, this entire RENA um, process is really messed up. What it does is create opportunities for developers, corporate interest, to create housing with, with government grants, <coughs> tax, uh, tax write-offs, et cetera, to create these um, subsidized apartments. And the people who inhabit the apartments, the, the people we actually want to help, they will not have any ownership opportunities. Maybe they'll have a, a, uh, an apartment that they can afford for a while, but basically the uh, fruits of their labors will go to uh, the, the equity of the corporations and not to themselves. And so I, I think as a social justice matter, we need to uh, change our strategies. Now here in Marinwood, we have uh, a really lovely community. It's a middle-class community. It was built in the 50s primarily as uh, a middle-class community. Uh, it was marketed towards San Francisco families to escape the city and raise their, their uh, families in uh, a country setting that was relatively close to San Francisco. It's a nice community. I, that's why I chose it. We have good education. We have open space. We have all these wonderful things. There are about 2,700 homes in the valley. And in this housing element, or the numbers presented by the Community Development Department, they want to put roughly 2,300 affordable housing units in our neighborhoods. These are large apartment uh, complexes from very low income, homeless shelters to uh, what they call market uh, uh, moderate income. And it's nice, but we still have the issue of uh, the basic issues of, of community. Uh, you know, who's basic, who's going to be, we, we're basically doubling the size of our community with affordable housing. You know, who's going to, who's, who's going to pay for the, uh, the, the local services, the infrastructure, you know, how is the traffic going to be managed, all kinds of things that it's just, it's so crazy, the amount of growth that they're forcing on this community. And as Sharon pointed out, the laws have changed. Now, if you don't build these units, the developers get to develop whatever the heck they want. And so one way or another, we're going to get slammed with a lot of housing and, and going to, you know, it has the force of law uh, behind it. Um, basically, the enemy or <laughs> enemy, I, I, I hate to put it in these terms, but you know, basically, we're in a very defensive position now. The time for persuasion um, uh, of the decision makers is pretty much over. And we as citizens 
need to seize the day and force our local officials and hopefully uh, state officials to reconsider what they're doing. Um, it's absolutely insane. How are we going to get more water? We all have high water bills now. Are we going to have like rain barrel collections at all, uh, all these uh, new apartment complexes? It's absolutely insane and no one has addressed it. Um, uh, specifically in uh, Lucas, Marin with Lucas Valley, there's three categories of affordable housing, very low income, which I think is up to, I think 40, 40,000 uh, per household, uh, up to, you know, moderate income. We have 80% of those units here in our community. And, you know, there's basically all, all these apartment complexes are very large co apartment complexes. I think I'm concerned about the social integration of these um, uh, apartments in, in our community as well. We do have alternatives, however. We have St. Vincent's and Severa Ranch, a lot, lot of open space where we could, we could build housing. Yet this is, for some reason, for some agenda that I am not familiar with, they will not build over there. And I've asked and I've I pre, pre, prodded. I'm, I'm an environmentalist. I care about wetlands and all that kind of stuff, but nobody has been able to explain to me why they have uh, uh, chosen to basically redevelop our single family neighborhoods and keep this uh, pristine open space next to a freeway open. Um, it could accommodate literally thousands of units. This law is so absurd, it really needs to be thrown out. And um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I hate to say it, I, I, I'm, a, I'm the passionate one. I, I would be like the truckers in, in Canada. I just think this is so insane that we need to just basically stop this uh, law in its tracks. So, uh, doesn't mean we don't we can't work cooperatively if they want to uh, uh, open up some of these practical uh, issues and discuss practical alternatives. But basically, they're throw, throwing uh, demands on us uh, everywhere in Marin that we can't meet because of um, you know limitations to our infrastructure. And uh, anyhow, I think they. I think what we're asking actually asking for is good city planning. So that's, that's, that's it. Um, if you want to hear more uh, about what's happening in my neighborhood, you can visit savemarinwood.org. And uh, I, that's pretty much all I have for this evening. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Stephen, thank you for bringing that perspective 